Welcome back to our Security Plus certification class. Hope that you have been watching uh, uh, the, the videos from the beginning. If you haven't, uh, then do so. In this session, we will discuss uh, objective 1.2.1, uh, authentication, authorization, and accounting, uh, what is known as the uh, AAA. Authentication, authorization, and accounting are crucial concepts in the world of cybersecurity. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user, a device, or entity in a computer system. It ensures that the entity is who or what it claims to be. Authorization is the process of determining what an authorized user or entity is allowed to do, such as accessing a specific resources or performing certain actions. And, and accounting in this context is the process of recording and, and tracking user activities, including their access to uh, resources and actions performed, often for uh, auditing, billing, or compliance purposes. Let's start off by uh, discussing authentication in a little bit more detail. So authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user, device, or entity uh, before allowing access to a system, a network, or resource. It ensures that the entity requesting access is who or what it claims to be. Uh, protecting sensitive information and systems from unauthorized access. L let's take a look at some uh, examples of authentication methods. The most common and the simplest authentication method is, is the uh, password-based authentication, where basically a user enter a secret password uh, that is matched against a store credentials to verify their identity. For example, logging into an online banking account using a username and password. As a matter of fact, it is the simplest method of authentication, and it is very dangerous in many cases in, in today's world. So uh, it is important that in most cases, you do not rely on a simple username and password to authenticate. A more secure method of authentication is multi-factor authentication, or MFA. MFA combines two or more authentication factors to verify a user's identity, such as something that they know, which is the password, uh, something that they have, like a security token, or something that they are, like a fingerprint. Uh, for example, uh, accessing a corporate VPN requires entering a, a password first, right? That's the first factor. And then a code sent to a mobile phone, which would be the second factor. A third method of authentication is biometric. Biometric uses unique biological traits to authenticate users, such as fingerprints, facial recognition, voice patterns, or retina scans. Um, we use this, uh, for example, when we unlock a smartphone with a fingerprint sensor or face recognition feature. Uh, Certificate-based authentication, it's another example. It uses digital certificates used by a trusted certificate authority or CA uh, to authenticate users, devices, or systems. Uh, for example, secure communication between a web browser and a server using HTTPS with uh, TLS certificates. That would be an example. So when you go to amazon.com, you're gonna buy something at Amazon. That's the kind of uh, authentication that you are performing. In other words, your browser and the server at the Amazon store. Token-based authentication utilizes a hardware or software. It could be an app on, on your phone 
uh, so it uses you know, hardware or software token to authenticate users. Tokens generate a unique uh, time-sensitive code that users must enter uh, to gain access. Uh, for example, using a hardware security key, such as the YubiKey, or a mobile app like Google Authenticator or a Microsoft uh, Authenticator uh, that generates a one-time passcode. Single sign-on, it's another form. It allows users to authenticate once and gain access to multiple applications or system without re-entering credentials. Uh, for example, logging into a company's intranet uh, portal and automatically gaining access to email, file storage, and other services. If it was not because of sign on of SSO, single sign on, you would have to enter a different username and password for different applications and different web services. With single sign on, now you may say, well, but isn't this actually dangerous? Because if somebody gets that username and password, then they can sign into all those services. Well, yes, th that's true. Um, that's why it is important that you use a strong authentication like using MFA. Now, in the other side of the coin, if you have too many services and then you need too many username and password, if you need too many methods of authentication, then that is a weakness because if you have too many passwords, you're going to write them down or you are going to make those passwords very uh, uh, simple or maybe use a password for everything, which is actually a big problem in today's environment. And, and that uh, it's even a worse problem than just having, you know, this signing in with a user uh, name and password and having access to many things. So, the, so SSO must be combined with one of those strong methods of authentication, like uh, biometric, multi-factor, and, and those other methods that we just talked. Uh, finally, uh, we have uh, a smart card authentication, which uses a, a physical card embedded with a microchip that stores cryptographic data for user authentication. Uh, for example, employees use a smart card IDs to access secure facilities and log into corporate networks. Authentication is a critical security process that ensures only authorized users gain access to systems and data. Various methods, ranging from uh, passwords and biometrics uh, to tokens and certificates, uh, they offer different levels of security depending on the context and risk level. Effective use of authentication methods helps organizations protect sensitive information, maintaining trust and comply with regulatory requirements. The second concept of the AAA is authorization. What is authorization? Authorization is the process of determining what an authenticated user, device, or entity is allowed to do within a system, network, or application. It involves granting or denying permissions to access specific resources, uh, performing certain actions, or execute functions based on the user's identity, role, or attributes. Why is authorization important? Authorization is important because one, it ensures that users only access resources necessary for the role, reducing the risk of data breaches and misuse. Two, minimizes potential damage from malicious or inadvertent actions by restricting access to sensitive areas and information. And three, because it helps organizations adhere to regulatory requirements by enforcing strict access controls and managing data privacy. Some examples of authorization are one, role-based access control or RBAC. Uh, here, users are assigned a specific roles within an organization and each role has defined permissions that determine access to resources. 
Uh, an example would be in a healthcare system, a doctor may have access to patient medical records, while administrative staff may only access billing information. I mean, you don't want the, uh, let's say, the, the admin at a hospital to have access to all your medical condition. Another method of authorization is attribute-based access control, or ABAC. Uh, in this method, access rights are granted based on user attributes, such as the job title, the department, or security clearance, and uh, environmental conditions such as time of day or location. An example would be a user uh, that can access sensitive financial data only if they are in the office, that means the location, it's the attribute, and it is during working hours. Uh, that would be the time attribute. Uh, access control list or ACOs. These are lists attached to resources like files, directories, or network devices um, that specify which users or groups are permitted to access or modify those resources and what actions they are allowed to perform, that is, read, write, execute, etc. Uh, for example, a file server, uh, ACL or ACL, might allow read or write access to a specific user or group, uh, read only access to another group, and no access to everyone else. In a mandatory access control or MAC, a strict access control method, uh, rather this is a strict access control method, where a central authority determines who can access what based on multiple security levels and classifications. Uh, for example, in a government agency, documents are classified at different levels. For example, a confidential, secret, top, top secret, and then user must have the appropriate security clearance in order to access them. OAuth is another method of authorization. This is a standard protocol that allows third-party applications to access user data without exposing the passwords. Users grant limited access to their information via tokens. Uh, for example, a user authorizes a fitness app to access their Google Fit data without sharing their Google account credential. Uh, it's common, for example, to use your Google account or your Apple account to have access to data in other companies, companies that have nothing to do with each other, but they allow those um, uh, users to allow the data without exposing the, the, uh, the confidential information. So that's an example of OAuth. Uh, permission sets in cloud platforms. Uh, cloud services like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud use authorization models to assign permissions to users, groups, or services. Uh, for example, an IT administrator creates a policy in AWS that allows developers to only start and stop EC2 instances while denying access to modified network settings. Another method is group-based authorization. Here, access is managed based on group membership. Users who belong to a specific group inherit that group's permission. Uh, for example, in a corporate network, members of the finance team group can access financial systems and sensitive documents, while the HR team members can access human resource management software. Two-factor authentication with authorization levels. Um, in this case, we can combine multi-factor authentication with a specific permissions for different actions within a system. Uh, for example, after authenticating with a password and a one-time code, a user might still need additional approval to access a high security vault uh, of data or perform critical actions like write uh, wire transfers. Uh, this is done in many banks, for example. The third and last component of the AAA is accounting, which is 
uh, in the context of accountability it has nothing to do with numbers per se accounting in the context of uh, cybersecurity which is part of AAA um it's also known as auditing or activity logging, but basically refers to the process of recording and tracking user activities and resource usage within an information system. It involves keeping detailed logs of who accessed the system, what actions they performed, and when they performed them. This process ensures a trait of all user actions, which can be reviewed, audited, and analyzed. Why is accounting so important? Well, in the first place, it provides a record of all user activities, holding users accountable for their actions and ensuring compliance with security policies. Also, uh, facilitates regular audits and helps meet regulatory compliance uh, requirements by maintaining a detailed log of systems and data access. Also assist in detecting, investigating, and responding to security incidents by providing evidence of what occurred, who was involved, and how the incident happened. Another important aspect of uh, accounting is the, uh, the help that rather it helps monitor resource usage for performance optimization, uh, capacity planning, and billing purposes. And this is very common on uh, cloud resources like AWS, Azure, and uh, the Google uh, platform. Several examples that we could uh, mention in the uh, account for accounting is uh, one uh, access logs systems log every login and logout event, including the user ID, time of access, IP address, and the device used. Uh, for example, a company server records every instance of a user accessing the network, including successful and failed login attempts. Uh, helping detect unauthorized access attempts or brute force attacks. Uh, number two, system event logs, uh, which logs uh, that track, these are logs that track all systems activities, such as file modifications, changes in configuration, software installations, and privilege escalations. Uh, for example, a security team reviews event logs to identify changes made to critical files or detect unauthorized installation of software that could indicate malware. Another example is network activity monitoring, which records and monitors all network traffic, including data sent and received and the protocols used. For example, intrusion detection systems, or IDSs, log unusual outbound traffic, such as large data transfer, which could indicate data exfiltration. Four, user activity audits, which periodic audits that review user actions, such as uh, data access, commands executed, or changes made to configurations. For example, regular audits of administrative accounts are important to ensure that only authorized changes have been made to critical systems configurations. Cloud service usage logs. These tracks usage of cloud resources, such as which users access a specific cloud services, the duration of their sessions, and the actions performed. For example, our organization uses uh, cloud service logs to monitor employee access to uh, cloud-based storage and applications, ensuring that sensitive data is not being accessed inappropriately. And uh, application-specific logging, where almost uh, all applications would generate logs for user activities within that particular software, such as access to specific features or execution of high privilege tasks. For example, a financial application logs each instance of a user accessing or modifying financial records, which is essential for detecting fraud 
or unauthorized transactions. And finally, we could also mention, and we just talked about this, usage reports uh, for billing and resource allocation, which logs and tracks usage of resources like storage, compute power, or software licenses often used for billing and cost management. Uh, for example, a cloud service provided generates usage reports to bill customers based on the volume of data uh, stored or processed and uh, to plan for future resource allocation. In summary, uh, AAA uh, verifies user identity, like passwords, biometrics, MFA, etc. Authorization control user access to resources uh, with RBAC and ACLs. Uh, accounting tracks and logs user activities for auditing and compliance, like using access logs. Um, the importance of this is that it enhances security, ensures accountability, and supports compliance. And uh, applications are used in network security, cloud environments, and enterprise systems uh, because of a AAA. That's the end of this session. Um, as always, remember to like this video uh, and um, make sure that you uh, add my channel to your to your list so that you are informed when I add more content. Thank you and uh, hope that you continue in this journey of this uh, Security Plus certification.